Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the, the, the right honourable gentleman asked uh, several questions. I'll try and deal with them uh, uh, in order. Uh, on, the, on the first point, the attorney, my friend, the attorney general, made absolutely clear, of course, that this is a judgment with which he uh, disagreed. Though, of course, we respect the judgment of the Supreme Court. On the second point, are we about uh, the, the, the the Ben Burt Act? We, I, mean, I, I will say what I'm sure he understands. We will, of course, obey the law and we will come out of the EU on October the 31st. On, on, his, on, his point about, on his point about preparations for a no-deal Brexit, I congratulate my right honourable friend, the uh, Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, who just spoke for two hours on this matter. Uh, we, we, our preparations are very far advanced, and I think this country can be entirely confident that we will be ready, deal or no deal. On his point about whether, uh, whether we are on the verge of getting a deal or not, well, it is absolutely true that negotiations are difficult, uh, but we are making progress. And all I will say to him and to his friends is that they have not been made easier by the Surrender Act uh, that he passed. And I am very proud, by the way, uh, to take his next point about everything that I did as mayor of London. I may say to the current mayor that he'd be better off, he'd be better off spending less on press officers and more on police officers in London. Because we were funding 20,000 more on our streets. And as for being trusted on Iran, Mr. Speaker, this is a man who took the shilling of the mullahs uh, from press TV. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I think there's something. I was rather sad, actually, in a way, that the Labour conference was interrupted uh, by the by the relief. Because I was I was I was awestruck by some of the things I heard. Doubtless designed, doubtless designed to obscure the inanity of his policy over Brexit. He wants to abolish fee-paying schools at a cost of seven billion pounds to the taxpayer. He wants a four-day working week, cutting the incomes of the lowest paid in this country. He wants to abolish Ofsted, and now we hear he wants to abolish all immigration controls from the EU. But there was, a, there was a crucial passage missing from his speech, it turns out, Mr. Speaker. I'm, 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 I think there's slightly, something slightly pitiful, in a way, about the right honourable gentleman. It seems that he actually did want to call an election now, Mr. Speaker. There was a passage in his speech calling for an election now, but it was censored by the Stasi in the form of the Shadow Chancellor. Or possibly, it was, I th or possibly it was the, or possibly it was the shadow, uh, the, the shadow Lord Chancellor, Miss, my, Mr. Speaker, the right honourable gentleman is being gagged, he's being muzzled, he's being held captive by his colleagues. They won't let him say what he wants to say. I say, free the Islington One, Mr. Speaker. And what, 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 why won't they? Why won't they? Why won't they allow him to have an election, Mr. Speaker? Why won't they allow him to unleash his charms on the electorate? It's because they're not only terrified that he's going to lose, but also even more terrified by the remote possibility that he might win. He can't control his own party. He can't decide whether he's for leave or for remain. He's being held captive by his colleagues. The electorate are being held captive by this zombie parliament and this zombie opposition. And he wants the entire country to be held captive in the EU after October the 31st at a cost of more than a billion pounds a month. We say no. I say no. Let's get Brexit done and let's take this country forward. Yeah.